Assalamu alaikum everyone. In our previous video, we discussed about the car engine and how the car engine generates power in order to move a car. However, how does that power go from the engine to the wheels to move the car? Well, for that, we need to use the transmission system. Well, there are different types of transmission systems. There's the automatic and there's a manual. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a typical five-speed manual transmission system. So to understand a transmission system, we need to understand about gears. See, gears are these little wheels that have these teeth. These teeth kind of work like levers and they help rotate each gear. There's an input gear and there's an output. And the difference basically is that the power is going from the input to the output. And these are used to transmit power in engineering. So in this example, we have two gears that are the same size. And the gear ratio here would be one to one. That means if I rotate the input gear once, the output gear also rotates once. That's one revolution for one revolution. And each side has the same amount of force. On the other hand, if the output gear is twice the size of the input, that means we have to rotate the input gear two times in order to get the output to move once. That means that we are having to use half the force per revolution, but we're having to use two revolutions. And that means that transferring power is easier per step but you're having more steps to complete in order to transmit enough power. Now that we've got gears set, let's look at the transmission system. The transmission system mainly has, has mainly three shafts. The input shaft, the output shaft, and the counter shaft. And all of these use helical teeth gears for a quieter operation, except the reverse, which usually uses a typical straight teeth. From the input shaft, this gear is connected to the counter shaft, which has all these other gears corresponding to the gears on the output shaft. Now, these gears on the output shaft isn't exactly engaged with the output shaft. That means it's not transferring power to the output shaft. They're moving freely regardless of the output shaft. So these are not anchored. So to anchor these gears, <laughs> now these gears are all in mesh with each other. That means they're always connected. If one gear rotates, the entire system rotates. However, the gears on the output shaft isn't anchored to the output shaft. That means it's moving independently of the output shaft. That means that it's not engaged with the output shaft. So what is engaged with the output shaft are all these synchronizing hubs. And there are these sliders to slide and select a gear to engage with. And that's how you switch gears. In a typical five-speed transmission system, there are all these gears. Now, in the first gear, we have a gear ratio of about 3.8 to 1. The input shaft gear rotates 3.8 times. The output shaft gear rotates once. In the second gear, we have a gear ratio of about 2.062 to 1. So it's rotating around 2.1 times to make the output shaft in gear, to make the output gear rotate once. And in the third, we have 1.4 to 1. This makes it so that the higher the gear is, the more fuel efficiency you have, but it makes harder for harder to make each step. In fourth gear is where we have direct drive. That means the input shaft rotate and the input gear rotates once for the output gear to also rotate once. 
and after fourth gear is what we have overdrive so in fifth speed we have uh 0 0.8 to 1 that means that the input shaft is only rotating 0 0.8 times in order for the output gear to rotate and some engines actually some cars actually have double overdrive so the input shaft is only rotating so the input gear is only rotating once in order for the output gear to rotate twice as for the reverse gear and when you hit this gear it rotates and in this setup we have the gears and the direction of the gears are actually in reverse and that actually makes the car move in reverse and these gears have straight teeth usually that makes that whining sound when you reverse your car as we know from our previous video the engine drives the flywheel and the input shaft isn't connected to the flywheel a pressure plate is connected to the flywheel and the input shaft is mounted on the pressure plate this, this pressure plate has high friction material on both sides and it is connected to the flywheel through the springs and a typical clutch has only three springs but in more high performance clutches you can have more springs because that will make the connection with the engine much more stronger but when this pressure plate is lifted off of the flywheel then it's no longer connected that means it's no longer engaged with the engine this pressure plate and spring is then connected with the pressure disc which then has a diaphragm spring and the diaphragm spring can pull on the pressure disc in order to lift it, lift it off of the flywheel and when it's lifted off of the flywheel it's disengaged that means that whatever power is within the engine does not go to the transmission system anymore and the trans and the gears slow down as it's not receiving any more power and this is a perfect time to change gears because now your transmission system is much more stable when you have changed gears you can put your foot off the clutch that helps the diaphragm spring release the pressure plate which it reattaches the clutch with the engine in other words the input shaft isn't exactly connected with the engine itself but it's connected via the clutch and the clutch can disengage and re-engage with the engine in whenever you're switching gears so that's all there is to it for the transmission system if you want to learn more about cars and about physics and about how things work as well as science or math or anything else make sure to like the video and subscribe and leave a comment down below and also ring the notification bell to, to get notified in, with any new content that i make and thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye